step three, SAN or system area networks, also multi-computer interconnects. So classical parallel distributed memory supercomputers use one of the following two approaches to connect their subsystems. Either they use direct node-to-node -node connections in a regular array, or they use nodes that are connected to a switching fabric. Switching fabric in this sense means that it's um, uh, some type of array or ar arrangement of switches which allows the nodes to change who is talking to whom. So the term system area network is used occasionally. More often we just talk about an interconnect. Here is a simple example. Let's say we've got four computational nodes like we did in the first step and they wish to talk to each other through some interconnect over here. And normally the traffic is centrally coordinated and it proceeds in a regular pattern. So in the first round, the computational nodes perform the computation that they were assigned and then they talk to each other. For example, this guy talks to his neighbor over here and his neighbor down here. In the second round, again, they perform their next computational step and then pass the information uh, across uh, diagonally to their partners over there. Round three is the same like round one. They repeat their computational step and again talk to their uh, next nearest neighbors over here. A direct connection in a 2D fabric will look something like this. Most nodes need four network interfaces. So here's our computational node and it needs an interface to talk to a neighbor to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west. So if you put all of them together, you will get an array of computational nodes like this. Here we've got a regular 2D pattern with uh, nearest neighbor uh, connects or uh, links. The thing that this picture doesn't show is actually how to create entanglement between these computational nodes. For that we need to include our BSA if we are using the meet in the middle uh, link architecture. So here we've got a symbol for BSAs or Bell State Analyzer. So you can see the crazy amount of Bell State Analyzer that we need for every link that we have in our interconnect. We need a separate Bell State Analyzer. Such direct connect networks have been researched deeply for supercomputers, computer storage nodes, where we have computer storage nodes at every vertex. For example, um, some important types which are used in commercial products are hypercube topologies. These were used in early multi-computer for size group at Caltech. 2D and 3D mesh or torus, they are commonly used in today's supercomputers. And the Fugaku, the top supercomputer in the world, at least in 2021, uses a 6D torus. Of course, we live in a 3D world, so here 6D just refers to how many degrees or how many nearest neighbors each vertex has. Now imagine that we actually have to place a BSA at every link between the nearest neighbors. That's a crazy amount of components that we have to include and they, they all have to work together. A different approach is to use a switch. Here we place a switch in the middle. The configuration of the switch determines which uh, pair of uh, computational nodes are talking to which other pair. For example, uh, we talked about a full crossbar over here, where we have n ports on one side, and depending on the control uh, of, the, of the switch, we can connect them arbitrarily to any other n of the outputs here. If you need to remind yourself of what a full n by n crossbar switch is, uh, we talked about it in our lesson on hardware. Now this is our approach that we are developing in Aqua, where rather than having n computational nodes as inputs talking to n computational outputs, uh, or having a crossbar switch in n over 2 inputs and n over 2 output ports, we have the following way, where we arrange our computational nodes over here as the inputs, so we have n nodes, and then as the outputs, we use them to connect to BSAs. This reduces the amount of the um, BSAs required to n over 2. So for example, if this node wishes to talk to this node, they emit photons, 
uh, the photons coupled into the input ports of the uh, n by n crossbar switch. And we set this configuration of the switch in such a way that those two photons meet at the output ports for one BSA, which interferes them together, allowing this computational node and this computational node to create an entangled link between them, which then they can use for communication. We can also think about using uh, waveguide um, switches in the same way, where here we are using a 4x4 four four, uh, crossbar switch with a six, six um, uh, interference nodes or six 2x2 two two switches. And again, we've got n in uh, uh, computational nodes which send their photons which connect to the in n input ports over here. In this case, it's just four. And then four output nodes here which would connect to n over two BSAs or in this case, just two BSAs. The thing is, sometimes it's not very practical to have a single switch in between the input ports and the output ports. Either it's very difficult to manufacture or the actual physical dimension of the device will be just too big for our purposes. What we can do on the other hand is we can create um, this effective switch out of smaller building blocks. We can in fact see it over here. Each of these interferometers here, A, B, C, they're just two by two switches. So we can think about our switching fabric in the following way. This is a particular example of a butterfly network where we've got these stages of interconnects composed of two by two building blocks. So here our uh, computational nodes send the photons into the first stage where they either get switched or they just pass through and then those output ports connect to the input ports of the switches of the second stage and so on. We call the input stage here as the ingress stage. So this is the stage where we accept the input from our computational nodes. So the photons emitted from the computational nodes. Then they couple into the middle or interior stage. The interior stage um, uses the output of the previous switching stage of the ingress stage and outputs and connects to the egress of the next switching stage. So the final stage we call the egress and this output finally couples to our BSAs. So that's the difference. Ingress is where that accepts the input photons. Middle interior stage is where uh, just a lot of the switching happens. And the egress stage is where the switching happens, but it outputs also then, then connect to the BSAs. Now, such type of multi-stage networks have been researched deeply for supercomputers, data centers, local area networks, and for switching telephone networks. So there's been a lot of research done on classical networks in this field already. Some important types also used uh, in commercial products include the full crossbar, which we have seen. It's just a single stage, but it need, requires n squared switch points. The claw networks, where three or more stages of smaller crossbars um, are connected. And uh, the smaller crossbars don't need to be of the same size. So they can, there can be some heterogeneity in terms of the sizes of the various smaller switches used in a claw network. The Benesh network uses two uh, log n where the logarithm is taken to the base two, minus one stages. Um, and it has n over two, two by two switches. The Benesh uh, switching uh, networks are rearrangeably non-blocking. The omega uh, switching networks is log n, has log n stages, where each uh, stage has n over two, two by two switches, and uses perfect shuffle function, but is highly blocking. So we have to be careful about that. The fat tree is a, a very flexible tree with fatter, in this case, uh, referring to how much bandwidth um, a particular link has. So at higher levels of the tree, we use fatter, higher bandwidth, um, um, uh, connections, but really in, in reality it doesn't just mean that the link itself is fatter, allows for more communication, but it, it can also refer to that the higher um, nodes are uh, connected to different switches, introducing some redundancy and robustness and full tolerance into the switching network. All of these networks are types of butterfly networks. That's the more general term used for all of these networks. 
Now, multi-stage networks have been researched deeply, as we said. And the most important things when designing a network are the various types of characteristics that we have to consider. We have talked about most of this already in our hardware um, lesson. So the few that I'm going to point out are the new ones that we have added in this step, and that's the component cost. When we are building a quantum network, in fact, when we are building a classical network, it always comes down to the cost. The cost is very important. Various switches will have various um, different costs. How many switches is important? How many ports do we need per switch is very important. And this all determines the actual component cost. And finally, we, talk about, we want to think about redundancy. When the connectivity is degraded, does it mean uh, that the switch has failed? Uh, or when a switch fails, does our entire uh, connection go down? Basically, it tells us how robust our network will be when using particular types of switches and how do we need to wire them and how do we need to uh, introduce uh, robustness in terms of redundancy. That concludes our discussion of interconnects.